Well, I can pretty much guarantee you've never read this short story or a short story like this before. This is not a copy and paste exercise. Welcome to Strip Cover Loot, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for another short story discussion, which will appear in several playlists here on the channel. Number one, the short story discussion playlist, obviously. Number two, the Edgar Allan Poe playlist, a playlist of videos dedicated exclusively to Edgar Allan Poe. And number three being the Horror Fest 2024 playlist, 31 videos in 31 days that revolve around the idea of horror to celebrate October 2024. This video will have three separate parts. A so what happened, a literary, a so what happened where we recap what happened in the short story, a literary criticism section where we talk about the literary merits of the story, and a writer's corner where we talk about those things we can take away from this uh, short story as writers. So let's get into it. What happened in this short story? Hard to say. Our, our speaker addresses us directly, which is helpful because we seem to be in some sort of astral flux. We go back in time to walk the streets of Antioch, a, um, a place where our narrator seems to hold some modicum of reverence. He seems to praise this society on some level the moment that we, are, we find ourselves there, but we encounter the emperor Antiochus Epiphanes, someone our narrator loathes especially because the emperor seems to have a propensity for killing Jewish people. That seems to be his sole delight in this world. And, in fact, our story seems to take place during a festival to celebrate the slaughter of thousands of Jewish people. And the tone shifts from marvel at what the society had built and accumulated to mockery that despite all of their achievements, the civilization has lost its humanity. And thus, wild beasts walk among the streets with the citizens on equal footing with seemingly equal status. So, what are the literary criticisms? What is the literary... Um, the literary merit to this short story. I think that the big thing worth talking about from this short story is if we have a civilization that has lost its humanity, is it worth keeping? Is it worth propping up a civilization just because it's a civilization if that civilization has turned? So the obvious sort of... Uh, um, counter to that civilization is what are basically referred to as dark ages, when a civilization falls, when disrepair happens, when disuse becomes commonplace. There is, in this short story, from our narrator, a very, very uh, negative tone once the loss of humanity is pointed out. It is our speaker asking, is losing humanity how civilization falls? Which decisions by these people on a day-by-day -day basis become things that are irreplicable when you're talking about carrying forth with society? The implication in, and I, I don't really know the history of this. I, I believe that this is rooted in some historical fact. I've heard these names before. Obviously, Antioch was a place. So I don't know exactly the transcription from the history books into this short story, but there is, you know, when you start looking back at societies of the past that were, maybe I can't even say this, more blood hungry than today. Perhaps that is a misnomer. Perhaps that is a recency bias. 
Perhaps they had no more bloodthirst than we have today. There are plenty of wars, plenty of the time going on right now, but it seems to be that we are mostly at peace most of the time. There is a difference, I think, being drawn in the short story between the bloodthirst of war and the bloodthirst of just picking off another civilization. It seems that the narrator is explaining to us that this civilization, Antioch, that we are visiting is a very powerful civilization, and the Jewish tribes were not quite so powerful. So this becomes seemingly, ironically, basically, if I can keep using words like that, seemingly, ironically, basically, um, hunting, which is the irony there is that this civilization seems to be hunting another civilization while they let wild beasts walk among them. They have become no more no more human than those wild beasts. Now, our speaker, on the other hand, keeps pointing to the, his love of Shakespeare, his love of literature, and love of philosophy. Are these two things, therefore, a firm grounding for humanity? We are left to ask the question, is the literature... Is the philosophy that which separates our speaker from the, the savage land that he has visited, the savage land to which he has taken us? Is it the literature and the philosophy that make him superior? Is he superior? There are a lot of assumptions made in the text, a lot of assertions made in the text, Maybe fewer questions asked by the text, besides that big one, is a, a civilization which has lost its humanity worth saving? I think the assertion at the end of that question from our author is that it is not. Now, moving on to the writer's corner portion of this video. This short story is a risk. Right? How much risk are you willing to take in your writing? Do you think that you have the skill to take this much risk? I have to admit, this short story was a rough one for me. Certainly, other people are going to read this sort of thing and revel in it. I don't know that I would take the risks in this short story. That is a humbling experience. Risk is the thing that makes a writer his or herself. There is a school of writing called dangerous writing when you put things on the page that scare you to tell other people. And it's the real maxim of this type of writing, as Tom Spanbauer says it, is that you write these things thinking other people will judge you for them, but what happens is when people read them, they think, oh my God, I'm so glad someone said it. That's what I was thinking all along. That is risk. That is sort of one of these things that no one can write for you. You have to write the risks that you see, and it becomes something which illuminates that risk for others. The next thing to talk about here, look, we can, we can, we can talk about the effectiveness of this short story. We can talk about the execution of this short story, and if we wanted, we could probably argue and get a little bit in the mud about the literary merit of this short story. But one thing I don't think that you can argue about this short story is that it took serious horsepower from the gray matter, especially for Edgar Allan Poe writing before the age of movies. He had never seen anything like this. It's one thing for a writer from today's world to explain 
a visual that they can see because in a movie they've seen people flying back through space and ending up in time someplace prior. That was not the case for Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is coming up with all of this off the top of the dome. Very impressive, if you ask me. And another thing about this short story, though I did not enjoy it, it is a very humbling short story as a writer. That is all I have for this short story discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here on the channel, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. There's poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.